What's going on people? Welcome back to a new video. Now, unfortunately, you would have seen that we missed last week's episode because Joe Creative Flow was selfishly on holiday in Amsterdam. Um, no, a well-deserved break, a well-deserved break. Um, obviously, definitely not up to extracurriculum activities, as I'm sure I'm aware. But anyway, uh, I actually filmed this Q&A. Just let Storm lie down, good lad. Um, actually filmed this Q&A twice and unfortunately my SD cards corrupted and then I'm not gonna lie I was this close from throwing my camera into the wall so I just thought I would wait for Joe so that's the reasoning behind it but this is going to be a raw uncut Q&A all things Iron Man from the Instagram so question number one what is your weekly training routine now right now my training routine is as follows so Monday is always um quite short intense running intervals and a lower body strength session so you're talking squats deadlifts lunges rdls hip thrusts stuff like that the running session is kind of well i'll give you an example monday's session was a 1k warm-up easy a 1k cool down easy but the middle chunk was four kilometers at pb pace so i ran 340 340s 335 something like that rested for three minutes and then again and again and again so it was four really hard kilometers and in total it finished at 7k um tuesday is always swim intervals shorter ones shorter more intense intervals and then um it is an upper body day wednesday is a double try day so what that means is we'll have a long 60 to 70 minute bike in the morning that's intervals based and then wednesday night which is a really hard session is the sub threshold running intervals so what that means is i did that last night it was eight minutes at four minutes to four and a half minute kilometer pace which is quick for me and then two minutes walk so that takes you to 10 minutes do that five times so it's a 50 minute session and then you also have five minutes of warming up cooling down so wednesdays are brutal at the minute um thursdays is just an easy long swim um so it's a second swim session of the week but it is usually usually easy and long so tomorrow that is 2200 meters um at a moderate pace and then friday is full body strength so at the moment we've been doing so friday is just a single training day complete full body strength so we're talking squats we're talking bench press we're talking chin-ups we're talking back to legs for goblet squats and rdls then we'll go back to upper body we do shoulder press and chin-ups at the minute and then it goes back to legs and then back to arms to finish get some tries and buys in and saturday is brick day which means big long bike and big long run so uh, this weekend on saturday we'll be doing two and a half hours it will be a 90 minute bike and a 60 minute run and sunday is rest day the god's day I try to do that as fast as I can for my schedule. It's a lot, um, but it tends to be the structure is the harder, more intense intervals, believe it or not, even though the sessions are shorter at the start of the week, and then you kind of recover towards the end of the week. So even though I'm working for two and a half hours on Saturday, the paces are really quite easy for me. Um, it's that those everything's pushed front loaded at the start of the week. And I've spoke to a few people who've done Ironman and they say this is the best structure so you don't burn out and you recover. That is that. I'll hopefully put someone on the screen here so you can check it out. Um, <clears throat> struggling a program, a full week of strength, cardio, CrossFit style, any tips? Number one tip would be get on the Sculpt Train program because that is exactly what we do. And we find that people, um, everyone at Sculpt finds that they are they come to us because they've burnt out trying to do this. We program, um, we'll have four key staple days where you'll have like, your big lifts, so you'll squat, you'll deadlift, you will bench press and overhead press, and you will do your heavy pulls, like your chin-ups, your deadlifts, your rows. And then amongst that, you will have hypertrophy, so like bodybuilding stuff in between or accessory work, whichever one you want to call it. And then you will have shorter metcons at the end. But two days of the week, out of those, you will also do longer endurance pieces. So this could be a 30 or 40 minute EMOM, something like that. Um, yeah. I'm doing an Olympic length triathlon in September. Should I start training now? Absolutely. Why not? Like it doesn't necessarily mean you go straight up to my schedule and what I'm doing right now, but why not just start adding it? If you're coming from a bodybuilding background or something like that, or maybe some, like, I'm not trying to patronize it, like a more basic training program. Why not just start doing one long run a week and then start adding it up. And then next month, there's no reason to start the earlier, the better. Okay, you will build up your tolerance, you will build up obviously your aerobic base and it will massively help you. How often do you use sunscreen for your tattoos? 
Um, never, never. I would say, actually, that's a lie. If I had a tattoo and then I went on holiday within the first week, two weeks, I would probably use some sun cream. But fun fact, every tattoo artist that I've had has said that I'm generally pretty good and have pretty good skin for healing. Um, I never really have any problems or scabbing or anything like that. Whereas my dad, for example, he gets trauma quite a lot when he gets tattooed, which means like the skin's like really broken down and it will try and recover, but it like scab it's pretty nasty. But a tattoo artist when I was really young said to me that if you're quite dark skinned, which I'm a little bit olive skinned, stick to blacks and stick to dark colours and you'll be fine. Um, and I've always done that since I don't know if it's I don't know if that's true or not, but I listened to him and I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Um, why do you never post an update on your OnlyFans? Because I don't log on. I can't even remember my, pa my password. Now, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say this or not. OnlyFans um, tried a while ago to break the stigma of being a sex-based platform and contacted a lot of individuals and paid them a fairly healthy sum of money in terms of a salary to try and do whatever they wanted on the platform. So they wanted me to put fitness videos on. They wanted me to put, they wanted me to be on the platform and they wanted me and they left it up to me to put whatever I want on. Now, if you, whoever this person is, I'm not going to name and shame you, signed up because you thought that I was going to get my dick out, that's on you, okay? Because don't get us wrong, there was some very healthy, tasty boxer shots and some short training shorts and stuff like that, which leaves a little bit of the imagination. Call me old fashioned. I don't really want my wife and future kids on the playground in 20 years, 20 years, in 10, 15 years, to have to deal with, I've seen your dad's dick on Reddit. I, like, all is old fashioned. I'd probably rather save them from the bullying now that will come and coincide with that. But thank you to OnlyFans. Paid me a nice bit of money, went into the gym, and that's all she wrote. Um, what bike are you taking on your Ironman? I believe my bike is giant. I don't actually know what type it is. I have a photo somewhere on my phone. The bike is something that I am not necessarily lacking uh, ability. I'm lacking knowledge. I'm definitely in what I did because I've actually got the train back from London today. I did a lot of research in terms of trying to find out what turbo train I should get, how to get Zwift and all of that, because that's something that I definitely need to get in here because I've been relying on the classic Concept 2 and what bikes that we have in the gym and then getting outside, which will be this week. Funnily enough, do you want little mini Adams running around? Hopefully, um, they will be little and mini because then they'll be a little bit better at barbell thrusters than me and we can send them to the CrossFit Games. But yeah, absolutely. Like at some point, um, I would of course like to have kids and that'll be absolutely amazing. But right now we're trying to tie down a solid girlfriend first and trying to find one that actually works with my life. So we'll start with that because I feel like that is how babies are made. But yeah, um, no, I think it'll be sick. I don't know what type of, I feel like I'll be quite a strict dad just from experiencing the way my dad was for me, but not strict in a bad way, but I feel like it will be, I'll have to try and take my own personal feelings out of it because I know that now, for example, I wish that I was pushed into gymnastics as a kid. I wish that I was pushed into like other stuff like that more and more because what do I spend half my time doing now? I spend half my time doing swimming, gymnastics, CrossFit, lifting, and like if my kid was maybe like humming and hawing, I think you should maybe nudge them in the right direction a little bit. And then, you know, it would have helped us out now. Um, right. I have no High Rocks training venue within an hour. What should I do? Um, so if this was me and you were getting programmed off me, what I would say is really easy. Everyone has the outdoors, don't they? So if I was programming for you, I'd probably do three sessions per week. And two of them would be running based. One would be a longer running session. Okay, probably zone two, zone three. The second running session would be more hardcore intervals, obviously based off your fitness levels. We would test that and we would find out what splits you can hold and then we would manipulate that. So there's two sessions already that you're not, you can just go outside and do. And then the third session a week, I would say that take, bite the bullet, drive the one hour for the gym, okay, once per week and we'll cram all of your high rock specific stuff into that. So in that session, if it was me, we'd probably spend 60 to 90 minutes of working on all the foundational segments of high rocks. So your wall balls, your sled push, your sled pull, all of those things. And hopefully that would help. What percentage of body fat are you right now? 
What do you think? <coughs> I'm lean. Six. Do you think I'm six? I'm not six, like. I'm gonna say eight. I'm, I'm going to say eight. Uh, anyway, uh, we were laughing because we were talking about this earlier on, but I don't know what percentage body fat I am right now, but in terms of weight for me, normally I would say that I very comfortably sit at 100 kilos. When I go through strength blocks and strength training in the past, I've went all the way up to 106. I'm now down to 96 kilos, which is light AF for me. I uh, haven't been that way in a long time, but I would like to think that I've been preserving a lot of my muscle mass. I would say that you, inevitably you're going to you're going to lose a little bit, but in general, I would say that I've maintained a quite a lot of it. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what percentage body fat I am. Here's a photo here. Uh, we'll put it there in the video just so you can see that. But that's that. Um, any advice to stop strength failing, falling with a large increase in cardio? Uh, brackets marathon training I would say this is something that me and Fergus have spoken about a lot because that is my goal I want to be able to be a hybrid athlete I want to maintain the strength that I have while doing triathlon um, the key points are trying to even if you're not progressively overloading because there will be days where you are struggling with that because you're tired you're fatigued and stuff like that is ticking boxes making sure that if you have four sets of Bulgarian split squats you might not be beating it you might not be increasing strength but at least you're matching it are you matching the volume in some way shape or form i would say that's something that i'm pretty good at like even if i have to grind it out and take a little bit longer rest i would at least do that and get the minimum amount of work required to maintain my strength i would say also make sure that your protein is high because it is very much important anyway times that by two when you are up and down in a deficit and not from all this marathon training and running you're doing and i would say make sure that you are eating back the calories that you have from your marathon training okay and i think the best way to work this out is i think it's the 80 something rule and if your watch is always going to overestimate okay it's not fully accurate so let's say garmin says that i've went on a run and i've burned 800 calories okay it's a 60 minute run take 80 percent of that number which would be what is that let's say it is about 400 let's it's 620 something like that eat that back yeah makes sense so you're not eating the full amount because garmin and apple watch and all of them will always be nice to and overestimate but you're eating about 80 percent of that back on the days that you do marathon training and on the other days when you just lift just eat your normal calories and macros hopefully that makes sense um the best training split for hybrid, building endurance, but keeping building a good physique. Like I said, our train program, um, the Sculpt Train program is the best split, I would say, for that. Um, we introduce everything in terms of high rocks, in terms of endurance and CrossFit sessions on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And it allows you to still progressively overload and lift Mondays and Tuesdays. So that would be lower body bias first, upper body day one. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, which would be lower body day two, which is a deadlift bias and split squat. And then the second upper body day of the week. Are you training for an Ironman? Are you fucking joking? Um, how are you finding Omnia training? I, honestly, very, very impressed. Um, I would say that sometimes I don't use all of the avenues to potentially like contact Omnia as a, as a client because I know Fergus personally and I will voice note and funny stuff and slag him off and stuff like that. So it's probably a lot more professional for uh, other people, but it is very, very good. He treats me exactly the same as anyone else and my full training program is there for the week and I know what I'm doing on set days. Put it straight in my diary and make sure that I'm ticking all them boxes. And there is a feedback check-in every Sunday. Um, yeah, how did you get into High Rocks? Uh, high Rocks... How did I get in High Rocks? I went to a knockout event with Miss Jade Skillen and kind of held my own in terms of the skier and the rower. And I think she just thought, mm, that might be quite a good partner for me to potentially have because she is a very, very quick runner at times. Like it's when I first started, I could not get anywhere close to her, but I worked on my running and I helped her with the other stuff, the heavy stuff. And together we do pretty well so i thought just why not give it a whirl really enjoyed my first one amazing amazing event loads of energy loads of atmosphere puma have pumped a lot of money into high rocks and high rocks in general it was just an amazing setup and i enjoyed it so much and quite enjoyed the discipline um and i wanted to get out of my comfort zone do some running and see how i got on so we did it 
Um, I'm not doing any calories. People are sending us the calories and the weight and asking them to work it out. I'm not doing that. That's literally what we do for a job, for a living. Um, doo -doo -doo. Are you currently single or dating? Always dating, aren't I? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Do you want to settle down and have kids? We've answered that one. Asking for a friend. Okay, Zara B381. Nice. Zara's are off the table though. My go-to meal at the minute. We're laughing about this before. I don't know what has gotten into us at the moment, but I tell you, I must be pregnant because the pasta cravings that I'm having. And do you know what as well? I had a sweet tooth massively when I was a kid and then like it kind of, I've kind of shifted to a savory monster. Like I'm all about the hummus and pita breads, but now it's, I don't know if it's, and I would be very interested if someone can give me a scientific based answer to this, but does swimming specifically and triathlon training increase the cravings for sugar? Because, oh my God, on them swim days, the amount of like sugar and stuff that I want compared to other days when I was just like lifting and doing CrossFit is astronomical. There's got to be some reasoning behind it. I'm sure it's something to do with glycogen depletion or something like that. But those days I need so many juices, so much water, uh, fruit, and then I'm getting all sorts of sweet cravings and I'm a bit of a whore for cookie dough, put it that way. Right, what is your daily take? How long are we on? What's the time? 16 days. Right. What is your take on daily supplements? I'm gonna do this one as my final one, and then I'm gonna wrap up. Whether I was the person that I am in terms of fitness and doing all this Iron Man and lifting and stuff like that, this is the category of supplements I would take if I was just an everyday Joe that didn't even train, that didn't even go to the gym, did steps, maybe was a teacher, anything, just imagine a stereotype. My daily health supplements would be vitamin C, vitamin D, Vitamin B12, if you can, cod liver oil, and maybe magnesium. They would be my health. That's like, I'm not even lifting. I'm not even bothered about the gym. I don't care what I look like. That's full on dad mode. This is the daily life, okay? Being a meathead fitness junkie, on top of that, so they're your health supplements, and I like to categorize it this way. This is for, if you are lifting as well as this, by the way, I would have whey protein, not every day, but for the days when you need it, when you can't hit your protein because you've been busy. Like me today, I'm going back to work until nine o'clock. I'll probably bang a shake in. Whereas other days when I've got more time to cook, I'll just get it from chicken and all that. So whey protein, um, creatine, because it's the most scientifically based supplement. And then to be honest, <laughs> maybe CBD, because I do feel like I have felt the benefits from that in terms of recovery and sleep, but I wouldn't say it's major essential, especially if you've got magnesium, but it is a bonus if you can afford it massively. And I would say the only other supplement that really is some sort of caffeinated beverage, whether it be black coffee, whether it be pre-workout, and I would say that a pre-workout is good for them days that you need it, or your knock And that is it, that is my supplement stack. And have I missed anything out that's a proper blunder? Nah. I would say I'm getting better and better at putting a lot of veg in. So greens powders, like I say, if you are an absolute nightmare at getting greens in, I would say, yes, have that. Ferg, I'm speaking to you if you watch this video. Okay, but if not, um, and you can get at least two green vegetables and then your other five a day or whatever, you're fine. But to predominantly, I just mix in a load of peppers and a load of spinach, and a load of broccoli with as many meals on a nighttime as I can. And that is it. That is a QA. and I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to do a really fun video next week of some way, shape or form because I'm first of all apologizing for my shitty camera. And second of all, we're playing catch up. But that is that. I want to hear what you want to see next. And thank you for that, Stella. But apart from that, see you in the next video. Over and out.